हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल द सार्थक शो वेर वी डिस्कस अबाउट टेक करियर प्रोडक्ट एंड लाइफ एंड टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट विद अस हर्ष ही इज अ सीजन डेवलपर इन ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी सो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट इज वेब थ्री ब्लॉकचेन क्रिप्टो एंड सो मच ऑल अबाउट इट एंड हाउ यू कैन गेट स्टार्टेड इन दिस स्पेस वॉट इज वॉट आर द स्टेप्स दैट यू कैन डू टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस एमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजी विच इज फॉरवर्ड लुकिंग so this is the agenda for this today's podcast and thank you so much harsh for joining in for this podcast and can you share a little bit about yourself for the audience um yeah hi sarthak and thank you for having me here i am harsh i'm a full stack blockchain developer and i'm way too much into open source so yeah i enjoy these technologies i've been into blockchain development since a year and a half now and uh, yeah i was recently a fellow at solana labs and yeah that's that's all i would like to say then we can like cover more things in the questions yeah great i think uh, uh, a lot of experience in that side and uh, definitely we would want to towards the move toward the very first question that has been constantly asked uh, what is web3 what is blockchain so yeah can you start with that um sure so blockchain technology is something which um, is a uh, very new which is new very fascinating and um, the core concept of it is having a decentralized um, version of things which we have today like uh, at first these are some research papers which were there since uh, 1980s and things like if you are someone who is aware of about the 2008 um, financial crisis you would know like how fragile our um, financial system is like it's a lot like currently even if you are someone who is up to date about the news and stuff you we know like inflation rates are at skyrocket and like they are having decades like usa is currently having the worst inflation in like last 40 years and stuff so these are all the things which got bitcoin in here in the first place like bitcoin was created for uh, fixing the money like that was their aim and uh, for that particular reason like in the what bitcoin is trying to solve is it's trying to solve uh, the money it is trying to fix it like how, um something which like at first currently uh, in 1900s us dollars um it established itself as the best currency in the world usd was the most popular currency and then we got to know that how only a few people are deciding how much money should be in the market how much should be circulated and things so this is something which is um, causing a lot of inflation like they printed a lot of money and and then now the valuation is not correct like they don't have enough gold to show for it so if you know how currency works and ha- if you understand uh, why inflation is coming in here so like yeah one of the answers to solve that particular thing is bitcoin and uh, yeah like blockchain technology is a simple decentralized ledger where instead of one entity keeping all the transactions we keep everyone keeps their own thing so like considering uh, there are just um, like you can consider a cricket match like let's suppose there's a cricket match going on and uh, there's this one person who is keeping the scores of uh, the complete match okay so if um, if that person gets bribed or something to keep uh, to change the scores and things he'll do it because that's just one person and one point of failure but consider now each and every player or of the cricket match keeps the score and uh, in his own personal book or something and uh, now if there is any mistake in someone else's score book we can correct it because we know like if uh, 15 people are saying this is the score and one guy is saying that this is the score so like we can trust like yeah 15 people are saying it correctly so now we are keeping decentralized way of um, like it's a decentralized way of storing it like there's not one point of failure so the thing which i explained the complete cricket match it's something how bitcoin works like instead of just having one transaction book uh, we have thousands and thousands of peers having each and every uh, transaction book and uh, yeah so later on how, when bitcoin came in around 2009 it catched up around 2012 and stuff later on uh, there was this guy called vitalik buterin who came in and thought like we should have something called uh, a decentralized applications as well so all the social media apps every app which you use currently today is centralized in some way or the other and uh, that is kind of a lot of power because a uh, majority of the 
tech power is controlled by only a bunch full of companies like only five to six companies hold a lot of uh, storage hold a lot of internet like they can basically do a lot of things and we will be at their mercy that okay like they are allowing me to use it that's okay but if they change their minds tomorrow i can't do anything like that's a very centralized internet we are having right now so web3 is uh, evolving around the same idea let, like let's have a decentralized apps let's have stuff which is not controlled by a single entity and uh, dapps is a new word which came in so decentralized apps dapps and uh, yeah like that's how web3 got uh, uh, its origin like yeah that's what, how i explain so like it, with ethereum um these came these things came on ethereum was something which came around around 2015 so like seven years from now and later on a lot of different blockchains came in and uh, now we have tons and tons of blockchains everyone trying to be their best and yeah that's that's what web3 is about yeah i think fascinating so how the concept of decentralization has come and started from money as a concept and moving towards social as in web applications applications in general which can mm. benefit the human race so yeah i see a very good potential over there and definitely want to be part of uh, that uh, emerging technology so uh, like if somebody who is uh, i would say want to move into this space as in web3 or blockchain technology what are the things that they can do to enter into this space what are the resources or maybe what are the some basic things that are required um okay so like uh, with blockchain a lot of non tech as well as tech roles got into the market and uh, like not a lot of new jobs came in around this so as a developer if you are someone who already understands how internet works how front end development works and how things are like that you can easily shift to uh, writing smart contracts as well so there's this language called solidity which is used for uh, writing smart contracts in ethereum and multiple chains which support uh, evm so like yeah if you are someone who is looking for a tech job into it you can start learning solidity and you can uh, later on move to like writing full like building full stack applications so if you are a, like if you are already a full stack appli uh, application developer in web2 world like you can only already build stuff with mon stack and things like that only a little bit of changes are now like instead of a database now you have blockchains which are in the database now so instead of a mongodb server now you have ethereum or polygon which will act as a database else everything stays the same majority of tech stacks i work with is react and nextjs for the things like i for the projects i build and uh, yeah like anyone who is a front end developer can easily get into this and uh, in back end we simply have blockchain as a database so yeah yeah interesting and i think uh, uh, a lot of people would be interested to move into that transition where uh, they can uh, based on their previous skill sets they can easily do that transition and move towards the web3 part of it and start developing full stack applications but uh, if you are someone who has not been part of uh, this full stack application as in you don't have that experience or you don't have that learning yet you can uh, check out the newton school course which is a full stack development course where you have you are taught from scratch about all the things required to become a full stack developer and it's a zero fee upfront course so you don't have to pay anything without getting an offer letter and a uh, job so yeah you can check that out and you can check the uh, link in the description box below about newton school where they are running this amazing course about full stack development but yeah continuing to the current situation let's like say if somebody who is not at all interested in coding or somebody who can uh, who has no experience in that and uh, can, what are the non tech profiles or how a non tech person can move into the web3 world so for a non tech person uh, i would say i have met a lot of people who learned coding at the age of 45 and now are doing awesome in development now they are better coders but if you are someone who is not looking for a coding job you what you can do is uh, we with crypto a lot of non tech jobs are revolving as well like developer relations and uh, like discord management is a job now community management is something which require a lot of sales people are required we require customer support for multiple tech stacks so what happens with crypto is like it gives you the freedom of uh, building uh, 
huge application so like considering in if without crypto if you wanted to uh, create an exchange or of some sort like for stocks or anything it will you'll need to go through a lot of documentation you'll need to do a lot of pen paper work and things like that but with crypto you can create a decentralized exchange within a couple of hours and uh, that's how you can like it, building it won't be a problem but like now we need uh, people for marketing it now we need uh, a community around it so every project in um, every project in crypto space as of right now is build, trying to build a community around it because that's how it will survive uh, the test of time so like currently there are so many projects and i'm damn sure that not a lot of it will make it because there are it gives you the freedom but like if a project has good fundamentals it will surely make it but uh, majorly majority of projects will die out soon but that's the thing right like we uh, we need to now understand which projects are like worthwhile to work for and uh, like yeah yeah like there are so many jobs as of right now for non tech folks in community management and like that's the thing we need a lot of non tech folks like developers are uh, developing is an easy part building a community is the hard part as of right now so yeah we need all sort of uh, people to get in here and like do the job yeah i think uh, it definitely makes sense because uh, it is not something which is very uh, tech specific something if you are working in the web3 part it's going to be a full fledged company and there are several roles and functions that require non tech people to work as a company so you don't need so only engineering team cannot run the entire part you need business folks you need uh, people who are managing people who are managing the community who are providing support operations and everything so yeah it totally makes sense to have non tech profiles as well in the web3 ecosystem so yeah. anybody if you are interested in that kind of a role and you have that kind of exposure and you want to move in that space uh, i don't think you should hesitate and you the experience that you have is going to be uh, phenomenal where you move into that space yep yeah uh, and sorry you are saying something yeah yeah just like someone who is uh, willing to learn new things daily yeah, maybe it, it may be in open tech it may be non tech you are welcomed you are you will pretty much get a job if you have the zeal and the potential to like learn new stuff daily and like exposure the like the more you want to like the more you'll throw yourself into this particular space the better opportunities will knock your door yeah totally that makes sense and i think everybody should have that zeal of learning new things every day because uh, these are some changing times and you should be always prepared to how the technology or how the things are emerging every day so you should adapt and learn and it's always a good skill uh, it's always a good thing to learn a new skill every day uh, as in, uh, every time yeah uh, and so moving forward i wanted to know like uh, how do you see the future of this uh, technology or this uh, space evolving because most of the application that i see today are in the space of currency as in cryptocurrencies or how they are related with the money part of it but what can be some other application that you are uh, seeing that uh, blockchain is changing the ecosystem or are creating a dent in it or what could be the certain application that were not feasible before but have been uh feasible like the their feasibility have been uh, discovered due to the blockchain introduction hmm. so like blockchain at the end is just a transaction ledger and uh, like we are storing a lot of things in there and like at the end we or like majority of it is money related because money today is just transactions like whenever you are doing a transfer as well from one bank account to the other bank account and not a physical money is transferred from one place to the other it's just a transaction which is getting logged right so anything any industry which deals with storage of a uh, lot of transactions and they want to keep it secure and for a long time can do things so like currently we are seeing a lot of health records getting stored on blockchain as health records are something which you need at each and every, so each and every place so like consider like all the hospitals of one particular country can have one big uh, one big blockchain which will store each and every health record of a person and like we can like trace it back immediately and understand like what particular things this person has gone through and like what particular is the like the health background of the person so like in uh, this is one of the use cases other than the money 
I saw some applications used by some educational boards as well, where they are keeping the results of um, people on the blockchain technology so that uh, the results are fetchable from everything. So, yeah, so like these are some of the other ways how it can be used. It can also be used for the voting machines and stuff like where we can have a transparent uh, voting machines and like it can be used for selection of governments in democratic countries. So, yeah, like these, there are a lot of applications which can be done. Anything which deals with uh, storage, even transparency is required where like even privacy can be taken care of using this. So yeah, like these are some of the other applications which I just uh, referred to, like where blockchain can help a lot. Yeah, definitely. It makes sense. I think uh, there are very forthcoming applications and uh, use cases that have been unlocked by this technology. And I see how people would be happy to jump the ship as in, see, as in when they see uh, more uh, as in more, more, more trust on the system, how things and they understand because uh, I could totally relate how web went web two transition happened and that transition took time. So that, that's, that is the time space that we are currently living in so because uh, there is a transition space going on from web two to web three. Once the trust build and people understand the thing, people are finding all the web three applications around them that the transition will definitely happen. And, uh, this is the course of nature that everything evolves to a certain stage. So, uh, how things evolve in a natural way that is the setting that is going to be so yeah uh, i think uh, this is going to be very helpful for the audience and they would have a they would have got, uh, got a chance to understand uh, and get a glimpse of the web3 ecosystem what is web3 all about what are things they can do and uh, thank you so much Harsh, for sharing all of these information in very simple way i think it solved uh, it, uh, it definitely helped me learn a lot of different things uh, i was unsure about so uh and definitely it, it intrigued me in a bit in a way that i would have that spark right now to understand more about web3 uh so people sure. yeah and uh, yeah, yeah like uh i would say like currently i'm working on the same thing where i'm educating a lot of people using blocktrain.info so like anyone who has the spark which Sartak just had can just go in there and like learn about we you can just go around and I can send a link as well, which you can put. And uh, yeah, like it's it's around the same thing where we are trying to promote education into this space because like currently that's a very big problem. Like people are getting, that's a very necessity. That's the necessity of crypto as of now. Yeah, I think that's a great work and kudos to you for bringing up that information. So anybody who is interested in learning blockchain and uh, want to learn more about the space, have that definitely that spark and zeal can check out the link in the description box below i will mention the link blocktrain.info which is a very good work done by the hirsch and his team uh, so you can check that out and learn more about this space and definitely if you have any other questions you can mention the comment section below and i will try to reach out to Hirsch for some other slot to discuss all of these comments uh, the comments that you will mention and would want to get a deeper sense into the block uh, chain and web3 technology uh, how mining happens what are the resources that are required uh, how you can have nfts what are the functionalities of nfts and so and so forth so all of these questions are planned for another podcast but definitely you can mention all of these things in the comment section below and we can have a full-fledged discussion and thank you so much harsh for joining in for again for this podcast thank you so much for taking out this amazing time for us and if you have to mention anything last bits uh yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And uh, for anyone who is like having the, for anyone who is like inspired by watching this video, uh, best of luck for their journey in this particular space. Yeah, definitely. I would wish all the best for the people who want, want to uh, take on this journey and move ahead. I would say full, full speed and Godspeed to you. And thank you so much guys for tuning in for this podcast. We will, I uh, will get back to you in the next video till then take care. Bye-bye.